The intent of this video is to review the B-17 bomber's defensive armament. The B-17s were armed with up to 13 Browning M2 50 caliber machine guns. The B-17's Flying Fortress nickname was based on the observed bristling number of guns when it was rolled out of the Boeing factory back in 1935. This view shows a U.S. Army Air Force cadet tracking a target as part of his six-week gunnery training class. This image shows a waste gunner in combat operating his flexible mount 50 caliber machine gun to defend his plane. At the end of this video, we will look at some combat footage of the various B-17 gun stations in action. There were three general types of 50 caliber machine guns adopted in World War II, depending on the intended usage. Over 1.5 million M2s were produced during World War II. The M2s adopted for aircraft usage were lighter at 61 pounds and included a barrel jacket for gun cooling. The water-cooled M2s were heavier at 121 pounds, but could sustain a, a longer duration of fire. These were well suited for ground anti-aircraft rolls. The field heavy-barreled air-cooled M2s were mounted on ground vehicles or adopted for usage in static entrenched positions. An exploded view of the 50 caliber gun is shown here. There are over 140 moving parts for each round that is fired. There are seven major groups of the M2 machine gun. This includes the back plate group, which absorbs the recoil of the bolt group. The bolt group draws and loads a live round, strikes a cartridge with a firing pin, and ejects a spent casing. The oil buffer group stops the recoil of the barrel. The barrel group is the business end of the gun. The cover group feeds the linked ammunition. The retraction and slide group is used for charging the first round. The casing group encloses all the moving parts of the gun. The guns must be removed and cleaned and reinstalled after every mission. B-17 gunners were required to complete a six-week course. The curriculum varied throughout the war based on bomber combat lessons learned. Two-thirds of the class was devoted to the Browning 50 caliber machine gun, practice firing, and gun sights. Students were required to just demonstrate proficiency in loading, unjamming, and field stripping the weapon while blindfolded. The gunnery course curriculum is shown here. Upon graduation, the cadets received their gunnery wings. 297,000 students graduated the gunnery school during World War II. Cadets are practicing disassembly and assembly of the Browning M2 50 caliber machine guns. Factoids of the Browning M2 machine gun include, the guns were air-cooled and belt-fed. Each gun weighed 61 pounds. The barrel is 36 inches in length and weighed 9.5 pounds. The muzzle velocity of a bullet is 1,900 miles per hour, or Mach 2.5. Each gun had a rate of fire up to 14 rounds per second. The effective range is 600 yards for the B-17 gunners. Gunners were trained to fire in short bursts. The length of the burst should not exceed two seconds with a cool down period between the bursts. A cool down is required to minimize cartridge cook-off and barrel burnout due to heat. The ammunition and ammo belt mix will be discussed in a future video. Crew members were instructed to position the guns for maximum airstream cooling between bursts. Another reason to limit the length of bursts was the diminishing accuracy expected the longer the gun fired. Testing showed bullet grouping increased dramatically with the duration of trigger pull. A single shot 50 caliber round fired from an M2 gun would produce a grouping within a about a 1.7 foot diameter circle at a target location 600 yards from the firing position. A two second machine gun burst would produce a five foot grouping. A four second burst would produce a wild 75 foot grouping. 
The four second burst would dispense 50 or so bullets, which would be grouped within this circle. The size of the groupings relative to a Messerschmitt ME109 is shown for reference. The basis for this data can be found at this source. The B-17F crew gun stations are shown in this figure. The B-17F model has eight gun stations. Two of the gun stations are power twin 50 caliber turrets. This includes the upper turret and the ball turret. The remaining six gun stations are considered flexible mounts. The tail gunner operates twin guns. The waist, radio room, and cheek guns are all single flexible mounts. The B-17G model mounted a Bendix powered chin turret. The bombardier operated the fire controls for this turret. The chin turret was added to increase the forward facing firepower needed to defend against frontal attacks. In close is a list of Browning M2 machine gun factoids for reference and review. The arc travel of the tail gun position of the B-17 is up and down, right and left, plus or minus 30 degrees. These waist gunners are demonstrating well-disciplined short burst cycles. Here we can see short burst cycles for the other gun stations. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.